Right. Okay. Holidays. So, um, so our virtual laboratory, um, this data enhanced virtual laboratory, is about uh, building information infrastructure in support of the national ocean modelling system. Uh, I'm giving the presentation, but um, two of the guys who are listed below, uh, uh, Angus on the right there, and Hugo on the left, and other people involved in my group here in IMOS are uh, Guillaume Galibera. Galibera, that's you. Combination of Galibera, <laughs> Guillaume Galibera, and Sebastian Mancini. And the other members of the project are folk in the Bureau of Meteorology, CSIRO, NCI. Claire's involved a bit. Uh, South Australia Research Development Institute, uh, Tasmanian Partnership for Advanced Computing, University of New South Wales, University of Western Australia, and in this case, Met Ocean New Zealand. So what, it, what, what are we actually trying to do here? Uh, so our project aim here is to further develop the marine virtual laboratory to support the long-term goal of the ocean research community, namely do, developing the Australian National Shell Seas Reanalysis, or ANSA, as we call it. Uh, so what, what is a real analysis? This is a technical term for a product which combines the optimum combination of model simulation and observations, maximizing the value of the observational set through data assimilation. Now, this project that we're doing isn't going to do the reanalysis. Um, here, the emphasis is on building on the, our capabilities to assemble the necessary observational data and to construct services to enable model ingestion of these data into the data assimilation schemes to be used in the analysis. The actual project to do the reanalysis is probably about a three, three to four year project to actually complete it. So given that we've only got uh, money till December, that's uh, it's not a realistic goal to even think about doing the reanalysis at this stage. So why do we want to do this? So the growth of the blue economy is predicted to be large by 2025, uh, and, the, and it's predicted to grow three times faster than the Australian GDP. So, so there is a, a burgeoning interest in the marine environment, and arguments for this national modelling service system have been around for quite some time. And in fact, it's a recommendation of the National Marine Science Plan 2015 to 2025. Uh, this, earlier this year, the Bureau of Meteorology commenced a plan for operational coastal modeling service. Uh, and to enable that to really get going, then certain groundwork has to be done to provide for such an operational system. And this is really what this project is about. It's doing the groundwork to provide the observations and the service to enable uh, reanalysis program to be done. So, reanalysis is quite simple in concept. Um, it combines combining observations and a model state through an assimilation process to produce an updated model state, which essentially will bring the model, generally speaking, closer to the observations and thereby providing a far more realistic simulation than sometimes do come out of model simulations. So, there are various ways you can do data assimilation. And there are various methods that you can use. Um, there are ensemble methods, such as optimal interpolation and using a Kalman filter. There are variational methods, either in three dimensions or in four dimensions, as in three dimensions in time. But each method actually requires uh, a, a way of reducing the observations that are available in the community down to a number that are manageable. And these, this manageable number of observations are called super obs. Uh, and you want to do this in, in such a way that you don't lose the information content of the larger data collection. And then when you actually want to do the analysis, there are various ways in which you can do it. Uh, and on the right here, you can see four different approaches to doing assimilation, combining the observations into an analysis, running a model, and you can see you get step changes, this is the top version. Uh, you can do it sequentially continuous with continuous assimilation uh, and again you get a continuous solution but there are step changes in this uh, and then there is non-sequential inter intermittent assimilation when you put information in when you actually have it available or the bottom one which is what we really would like to aim for which is the non-sequential continuous assimilation to end up with a smooth solution 
from the results of the assimilation process. So in setting up coastal models, and this is what the Marine Virtual Laboratory actually does. The Marine Virtual Laboratory, as it stands at the moment, is a tool for uh, accelerating the development of coastal modeling studies. So in the Marine Virtual Laboratory, you can go through, step through a menu, which enables you to select different uh, uh, com community op open source models. It, so you choose from a menu of those. Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold still. Uh, and uh, uh, you can choose that. You can define your uh, grid and region of interest from a map. You can then select, uh, and you can play around with that to get resolution right and things like this. That you can then select from another menu to choose from your in, uh, from data sets for atmospheric forcing, from initial conditions for ocean boundary conditions, and you can tune some of the parameters. And at the end of the process, you can either submit um, your uh, your configuration into the cloud to do a simulation with a particular model, or you can actually uh, 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 bundle the data sets that you've collected, constructed from for the particular model of interest, and take them away and use them on a computer somewhere else. But in all those processes, there are certain things that you need to do. And you need, some, you need information about the geography, about the coastlines, you need information about the, the, the sea depths, the bathymetry, you need an initial condition, you need boundary condition, uh, boundary forcing for the ocean, and you need surface forcing for meteorology to uh, drive the ocean circulation in the process. And you also need some other information, particularly in coastal areas. Um, in Marvel at the moment, once you've chosen your region of interest in your time period, then a web processing service delivers observations that you can use for validation of the simulation. Um, and what we're moving on to now is thinking about how you use the observations available in data assimilation processes. Three However, minutes. Uh, sorry? Three minutes. Oh, okay, plenty of time. So what you actually want in a coastal ocean uh, reanalysis is, is a variable grid. Uh, and this example here, uh, which I've chosen as the CSIRO compass model for Storm Bay, which is just down here in Hobart, uh, shows the kind of resolution that realistically you, you want to do if you're going to do a sensible reanalysis of coastal processes. So here you've got grid sizes that range between five kilometers down to 100 meters. So our project here intends to acquire and assemble the necessary data to do uh, this reanalysis between 1992 and 2016. Yeah, compiling observational uh, atmospheric forcing, ocean forcing, uh, part of the project is providing a coastal discharge set, which doesn't exist for Australia at the moment, to, to enable us to do this because fresh water inflow into coastal regions is an extremely important forcing function. Uh, and we need to assemble the necessary bathymetry <coughs> and information about tides because tides in coastal areas have to be taken account of when you're doing data assimilation. So the second part of this is to develop the services to prepare these model ready observations, the super ops, for use in the intended schemes and the in schemes that we're going to uh, use, assemble stuff for uh, ensemble Kalman filter, ensemble optimal interpolation and 4D VAR. And there's remote sensing data, satellite information, the long track data, there's in situ data, combination of profile data, mooring data and glider data. Uh, and the intention is to assemble all of this information uh, on NCI and to run a service uh, to, uh, to process those observations uh, to produce the super OBS outputs for the necessary uh, inputs to assimilation runs. So we're in the process of looking at designing a GUI, a user interface, which will take a, a limited number of parameters. It will take the grid that you want your observations gridded to take the time period of interest and the data cycle time that you want to adopt. You'll then choose a particular assimilation scheme. You'll choose observation parameters from a list that we have. And then the observations will then be processed. And that's our job at the Australian Ocean Data Network, using either web feature services or web processing services. We're still in the process of deciding how the best way approach to go. Then uh, all this then runs on NCI uh, using uh, code that's been developed by uh, Australian data assimilation scientists. 
uh, one, one code for ensembles, one code for 4 var, uh, and then your output from the end is these super obs formatted for the chosen scheme that you will then use to run your particular model. We're aiming for this service to be open, and this is something we're negotiating with uh, NCI at the moment as to how this can actually work, because a lot of these data sets are under different projects in NCI, and we want to bring them together and make them available to the community. Some of the key questions we've still to resolve, um, because of the involvement of New Zealand in this space, then we're, we're contemplating we have to extend this region of interest over to New Zealand. Um, we still, as I said, mentioned, we're looking at the best way of delivering the observations in terms of which sort of service would be appropriate. Uh, and in general, looking at how efficient can we make this production service for uh, the users. And then the latter parts of the project uh, say uh, are two things really. One is about demonstrating the utility of these services through test cases, which our modeling teams are in the process of defining at the moment. So it may be they will run different uh, simulation scheme to the one they currently use in their work to look at the comparison between the results, but also look at how efficient it is to construct these super obs compared to the way they do it manually at the moment. Uh, and then when, when we've compiled all those data sets for the 25 year simulation, then we'll look at how we add these data sets into Marvel as it stands at the moment, which will make uh, the utility of this service uh, much more attractive to our users. And I think that's it. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Roger.